Hi, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Feelers, and I'm going to attempt to show you a very beginner's tutorial on how to draw in one point perspective. This can be done in both Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. Actually, in Affinity Designer, it's probably easier, but since most of my tutorials are in Affinity Photo and some of you don't have Affinity Designer, I would start here. So what we're going to try to do is draw these factory buildings in one point perspective. So let's get started. I'm going to delete most of this, not delete hide I mean, because I basically started on this one. So that was my building. So I'm just going to pull out. I want to show you how I got this in one point perspective. You have to decide where your horizon is going to be. So the view of these buildings is almost like looking in from a drone come flying in overhead. So we're going to be above this. And what I did is, you see this right here? I'm going to get a close up. This is a double star. And you can give it any color you want that contrasts with the color you're using. And so I'm going to show you how I got the double star. I went to here where it says double star where the shapes are. And I drew a star. I gave it a stroke. So this one I'll give red. And the fill is going to be no fill. You can decide where your horizon is going to be. I decided on this photo that my horizon is going to be, I'll bring this down here. This is going to be my horizon. You see where that green dot was? So that's where my horizon is going to be. So I centered this right at that horizon. And now I have to do a whole bunch more points. Now, if you look at the one I did before, it says 47 points and 100% radius. So if I go to this one, I can go here. I just did a whole bunch of points. So that in our particular case, I did 47. You can do whatever you want. And these, these go all the way down. And then this is all the way up. So it's 47, 0, and 100% in my case. From that point, I just enlarged it holding my Control or Command Shift and enlarged it till it was at the edge of the page, just like that. So I'm going to delete that. And this is the one I originally had. And let's move closer. And you can see now. Mine, mine was uh, done in a green. If you touch it, just be aware that it's going to look blue because that's the selection. But here it is, and I have to lock that in. So I have now decided that this is going to be my horizon. And I can choose a photo, which I did. This was the one behind it. And when I chose this photo, I moved this so that my horizon would be right where the dot is, just like that. You have to do that with every photo you use. That has to be your horizon right there. I'm going to hide this for now. Let's talk about one point perspective. One point perspective is you must follow this to this point, whatever lines you're doing. So if you're doing a horizontal or vertical line, they must be exactly horizontal and it must be exactly vertical. That has to be, for example, this and this should be a 90 degree angle. But if you're doing any other parts, it must follow to that point. So even if I went in the middle here, I would have to draw something to here because it's the middle of these two lines. So I'll show you how I drew this particular house and I am going to draw one more just like it. So what I did was I went to the rectangle tool and I start on, see this line right here? I'm following this line and I started here and I can draw any size I want. If I want this to be bigger than the building, I could. If I wanted to go back further, I could. If I wanted to be taller, I could. So let's give this building, let's give this rectangle a color. So let's say in this one, I'm going to give it maybe a blue color. So this building could be a blue instead of a red. And I think I want the outline to be black. And the outline could be as thick or as thin as you want. So let's start by bringing this behind the building. So you could see what I'm working on. And in this case, I need to follow this line and I want to follow this top line. So to follow the top line, you grab a node, but you don't want to, remember I said everything has to be perfectly horizontal. You grab them both. And now if you hold the shift key and you, the down arrow, it moves it a lot. 
And if you want to be more precise, you let go of the shift key and you move the down arrow. So that is right where it should be. Everything horizontally and vertically must be the same. So if there's a little bit of an illusion when you're looking at these lines. So all you have to do is deselect them and you can see. But I'm, I need to keep those lines up. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to grab these. And with my left arrow, and if I hold shift, I can move further. I'm going to maybe, in fact, I'll, be a, I'll make this building a little bit bigger. So it'll be right on this line. It doesn't have to be. If you wanted it exactly, you would go here. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it exact. So that's it. That's the, that's the first side of the building. And you can shade them and all and do all kinds of things. So now I'm going to duplicate this. I'll go to Controller Command J. And now I have another one. And what I'll do with that one is I will move this out like that. And now remember this line here with my node tool. I'm going to take this one and maybe decide what, how wide we want that building to be. So maybe we want it to be like that. And then I'm going to take this one and follow this corner right here. But now remember, this has to be perfectly up and down. So you may need to do an adjustment. So I went here and I aligned horizontally. So I know that that's up and down. And if you get a close up, you can get more precise on where you want that to be. And that looks pretty good. That's following that line pretty closely. Let's do a roof now. So we could take this one again and duplicate it. Control or Command J. And I can move that up. And now once again, I'm going to get a close up. I need to follow my roof line. So for example, this here with the node tool, this has to come to here. And this one has to follow that line, but you need to make sure that these two have a, that are aligned vertically. And then once you're aligned vertically, you could select this and with a close up, move your arrow to the line. And then you can change the color of that building, say to, we did a gray before I'll do that. I'll do a, a maybe a, just a shading blue. The way I did the windows was exactly the same thing. I'm just going to go in front of this wall. So now I'm going to draw another rectangle, just like that. I'll give it a different color this time, maybe dark gray. And let's move this one and follow this line right here. So that corner should be there. If we want the windows to be the same size, we want to go to one, two, three, four. So I'm going to move this down. One, two, three. I'm going to move it down to this one. And then I'll convert it to curves and go to the node tool. And with this one, I got to go straight up and down. So I'll use the arrow with the shift key and then the arrow without the shift key to be more precise. And then this one, same thing. And maybe I feel like that window is too wide. I could always go in. But remember, when you go in, then you got to do this again. So you got to go down and then this one down. So you get the idea what I'm doing there. Now you can do other things. I'll take this one building, for example. I'm going to open that up. Now you can also, for example, take all the windows and maybe give them a thicker outline or a stroke. Let's see if we could do that in one shot or we have to do them individually. You see that? So you could see how all the outline could change. You can do all kinds of different things. Let's get a close up here. I'll add another pixel layer above it. I will take a soft brush, change this color, and I want to match the color with this. So that's the same color there, but I want to darken it a little. So I'm going to go a little bit darker like that. And with a very small brush, depending on where your shadows are going to be, you can kind of do this kind of a thing and this. And of course, you can also go and get effects and do Gaussian blur. You can do something like that. You can change the opacity. But you get the idea. I'm on the same level, uh, so it'll be the same kind of opacity there. And I could just kind of do something like that. I'm working quickly, and I'm working with a mouse. And I can get rid of these green lines so I can see what I'm working with. 
So the STAR tool actually helps you with perspective. I'm looking from above, but you can always go down. And the way you, way you change your perspective is, let's turn it on. You change it by moving the center left, right, up, or down. If I wanted to show this building from eye level, I would have moved this down to here. Let's just pull out what I just did here. I'm going to get rid of this and then show you how I did the street. Now remember, the one point perspective is right here and it's very important that you stay that way. So what I did was I added a street and the street is very simple. I'm going to show you. I just put, did it in three parts. There's one, two, and three. So I can do that again. So all I did was I pulled out, I made another rectangle. You know, I love this rectangle shape tool and it has to be right on the center there. And then what I did was convert to curves and decide where I want this curve to be. So now I have to follow this line and this line. So I'm going to get a close up. I need to follow. Remember this line right down here and this line. So if I convert it to curves and then I grab the node and I can only go perfect. Don't forget horizontal. Exactly. I'm going to keep dragging this horizontally. Then I have to pull this one out a little bit. I want to follow that green line. So that's important. And I want to drag this and very close to there. And that looks close. And then I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to pull this one out and then start dragging this one across in. And I need to be on that line. I'll get a close up to show you what I'm talking about. See this line here right there. I need to be on that line for it to be in perspective. And now it goes off the line. So if you grab here and I'm using my arrow key, see how now I'm following that line. Okay. So now let's see, did I follow it there? Yes. Well, I'm a little bit off here too. So I'm going to, when you get closer, you can see how far off you go. So I'm just hitting my right arrows and left arrows to keep it on the line and see how it goes off a little bit here. And I will just go like that. And that looks close. And the way I got the rough texture is I just went to here. I picked a color. I think I picked a lighter color and where opacity, if you click opacity, it changes to noise and I changed it to noise. And now the second part was I did was a street. So the street was very easy. I just duplicated this control or command J. I turned it dark and with no noise. So I click here one more time to get rid of the noise and picked some kind of a street color like that. And then I pulled out. So I'm going to start the street right here. Maybe now I go to my node tool and I can move them. I'm going to just drag it quickly across. And let's say that's going to be where my street line is. And this one too. And that's going to be my street line. Now, again, it's not a hundred percent because you have to get close to see where you are. And it looks like it starts going up. So you have to take this now because it has to be in perspective and you move it until you're on this line following there. And then you take this one and you move it till you're on the other line. In fact, I'm going to delete these original ones and I drew a rectangle on top of that and decided how wide I wanted it to start. So I'm going to go from here to here. And then I need to be right there. So as long as your bottom points are in the right spot, then you can go convert to curves and your top, by the way, should be just about in the center of that mark right here. I'm going to pick my node tool. Did I convert to curves? Yeah. Pick my node tool and horizontally move until I meet that line right here and same here must be a perfect horizontal to meet though. And then I will change the color to some kind of an amber. So I'm going to try and pick some kind of an amber color, a little bit dark, just to make it look like it's the line. And then I pulled a photo in and I could have pulled any photo in that I had a, a perspective in the center point, but this is the one I pulled up here. Here's the original and it was not in the right place, but if you move that, right to this, make sure you're always on the horizon here where the dot is. And then if you moved it there, that's how I ended up with this. I can even try and pick another photo, let's say scene. 
just to show you that it works with almost anything. Um, let's try this one. And we need to find out where the horizon is. And this one, I'm going to go back here, move this down. I'm going to hide the original here. And then I'm going like this. And now the horizon is higher up on this photo because that's where the road is. So follow this and say that would be about where the horizon would have been. So hiding the star shows you. I think the picture needs to be just a little bit down more. So I hope you liked this tutorial and I hope you found it useful. So thank you and have a great day. Bye.